She was the most heroic of women, the most womanly of heroes. So heroic, in fact, that she was virtually indistinguishable from any other woman. We look at her, and knowing little of ourselves, we learn little of her, because she was us in all our innocence, our terror, our ambition. In her, the simplicity of artifice and the simplicity of genius were so intermingled that we cannot distinguish them nor properly credit an authenticity so unique that it was utterly unrecognizable. It was a rainy Thursday afternoon, probably 2, 2.35 p.m. Zoe and I met in South Bank on the corner of Sturt Street and Grant Street. And we decided to have paninis. We thought, let's get some paninis. I think that was because Zoe was hungry. And I remember we had paninis because mine was a little like, cold in the middle. And I said to Zoe, I was like, hey, Zoe, my panini is cold in the middle. And, uh, <laughs> She didn't say anything, but, you know, that was Zoe. So that was the day we had this idea. We had this brilliant idea to make a show about Calamity Jane, you know, this film that had been so important to us as children, but when we grew into adults, we realised it was totally fucked up. And we wanted to make a show about the real Calamity Jane, who was this fascinating, inspirational woman, a, a proto-feminist icon, so we used to call her. In real life, Calamity was rough, you know, she was dangerous. And we wanted to make a show about truth. We wanted to tell the absolute truth, which I don't think anyone else was really doing at that time. She looked me in the eye and said, let's do this. And we did. I don't think either of us really understood at that point exactly how much those cold paninis would change our lives and the lives of others forever. I was sitting outside the MTC with Zoe the day before Calamity opened at this, at this crappy bar that used to be there. And it was a beautiful Melbourne evening. The sun was just setting behind the Art Centre spire. There was a light breeze. And, and I turned to Zoe and I said, I think you might have done it. It's not often you get a show which has a universal effect that affects everybody. You know, usually you get a range of responses in a theatre or in a film or something like this. What was quite extraordinary, I, I think, about this performance, this production, was absolutely everybody was overwhelmed by it. Calamity premiered at Melbourne Theatre Company's Neon Festival in 2015. It started out very light, um, but it became incredibly dark. You know, it was really a total theatre production, a constructed world, but one of such richness and reality and importance to us. I had no idea what the time was, how long I was in that place for. I, I didn't recognise people afterwards. I kind of just, I didn't want to talk about it for a few weeks. It certainly changed me, my, my view of life in a, in a major way. Within a year, Calamity had toured the world and won every theatre award possible, as well as some that previously weren't so possible. For, for, for theatre artists, I mean, it was completely, uh, I mean, it was just absolutely no precedent. I mean, can you, I think it was just kind of crazy. She achieved extraordinary things. I see her as a, a, a touchstone of our culture. And I mean, more than theatre, more than art, I think of her as a touchstone of the very culture we live in for the entire post-feminist period. Shares in the Zoe Louise Moonbeam Dawson Shakespeare Company sold for an unprecedented figure. If she told me the sky was pink, I saw pink. If she told me that dog was dead, I thought it was dead. And it turns out it was a lamp, or it was, a, it was my sister. But the point is, she could say things, and I just believed her. Before long, the award-winning theatre show was adapted into a critically acclaimed film, a young adult fiction series, Australia's longest-running sitcom, and a chain of organic, biodynamic feminist juice bars. 
She didn't have an agenda. She never set out to be an icon. I don't think so. That was the thing about Zoe. She was just Zoe, you know? She was notoriously down to earth. I remember there was this time just before Calamity, when it all happened. Uh, we were at a party and I almost wasn't going to go because I'd been sick. I had gastro. Because I'd had gastro and I felt insecure about it, she vomited on herself just right there, just so I didn't feel funny about it. And she didn't clean it up for the whole party, even when people asked her to. But despite Zoe being Zoe, a dark cloud of controversy swirled around the success of the Calamity franchise. Before long, people began to question how Zoe, Zoe really was. Who was the real Zoe Dawson? Well, that is one of your $5 million questions. She was very, she was difficult. She was an enigma, a beautiful enigma, a thrilling, talented, and very desirable enigma, but an enigma nonetheless. I don't like to talk about it much because we were so close and I find it quite hard. But it's almost as if the more you tried to discover who the real Zoe Dawson was, the further away any semblance of a real human being receded. We have a saying in the occult where it's like you worship a false idol and you invoke the power into that idol. And I think we did that with Zoe. And eventually she had so much of our collective energy in her that there was nowhere for it to go except down. It was as if she stopped trying to be herself, which was shocking, really, because the Zoe we all knew and loved was always herself, first and foremost. Are you a No. Yeah, there were rumours. I mean, the big rumour was that Zoe shrunk tiny heads. But I can't prove that. And I'm not saying it happened. But amongst all these sordid rumors, where is Zoe Dawson now? I think she still lives in a giant mansion in California with like 50 dogs. After the accident, I mean, her leg was mangled or something like that. That's what I heard. And then she, she became a cabaret singer. I heard she died of syphilis, alone in a hotel room. Burned herself alive in protest about the patriarchy. When I heard about it, I thought, yeah, that sounds like Zoe. I'm really happy for her, and I think she got what she deserved. Zoe Dawson gave us world changing theatre, but she gave us so much more than that. She gave us somebody to look up to, somebody to chase, and something to hope for. And to that, I say, all right, all right, all right. Cheers, Zoe. 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 Cheers, indeed. Go get him, cowgirl.